Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. I've got my paints out. I've uh, got a few colours. Some blue, black, red, <laughs> yellow, green and an orange. That's actually burnt sienna. I consider that to be an orange. Um, that's a sea blue. Uh, lizard and crimson but it's more of a... it's actually a, this one permanent alizarin crimson which is a little bit different to alizarin crimson the original the pigments a bit redder it's less blue than alizarin crimson um yellow ochre it's always a classic yellow if i ever had to get a yellow i would always go for yellow ochre because you can get most colors mixed with yellow ochre it's just some of the well if you go too bright i guess the really bright yellows you can't get it but most yellows you can mix with this and the thalo green most it's a powerhouse of a green i put it on because it's got a bit of a blue tint and i need a bit of a blue tint to a green but anyway i took a picture at a charity shop of a couple of pots <laughs> it's my way of uh not getting loads of clutter while i'm in the charity shop looking for bargains I uh, take a photo of some of their pots for paintings so let's have a go at this one it's quite a challenge actually there's a there's a picture behind the items so if you want to see the finished painting and you want to use the finished painting as reference or you just want to make up your own you know it's up to you have fun <laughs> You can uh, skip to the end and take a screenshot if you want of the finished painting. I uh, I used to try and put the reference picture up, but I did that and it crashed my computer. So <laughs> everything is crashing my computer at the moment. So I'm trying to be careful. Just grabbing a little bit of white in my black to make more of a grey. So it's more of a grey now. Uh, let's try and do this picture. There's a jug. Maybe I'll mark off where things are. Well, let's do the picture first. The picture is about there. Maybe about there. About there, maybe. I'm going to get a smaller brush and I'm going to mark out where that jug is. I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and white. There's a jug. Uh, it's about the size of that, so it'd be about there. It's about there. Something like that, about there. And it comes to about. Mm, about there, I think. Anyway, that's that. That'll do for that because I'm going to be quite loose again. I don't want to be too strict with myself on painting. I'm trying to keep things loose, but I'll do some marking out just to make it easier for myself. <laughs> Put a bit of water in my colour so I can actually see it. There we go. So there's a bit of a jug and it's about that wide, about that. So it's quite about there, maybe. Something like that. And then that comes down to about there. And that comes down. 
comes around. It's quite a nice vase actually this. And that goes sort of around and then down. The, the middle of it's about there. Some people say that find the middle of the uh, the item and then it's easier for you to do both sides. So it's about it's just a little bit in front of there. It's probably about there because then it gives you a guide uh, for doing both sides of the item. Just like you can look at this and go sort of go like that and then like that and then. You can see that the it should be about there, and then you can do. I kind of do it like this. I know it's not that accurate. But I don't want to be getting the ruler out. <laughs> if you look at some of my older videos, that's what I used to do. I used to get the ruler out and I'd measure everything. I I still could do that technique. I mean, it's not a bad technique. It's pretty good to get accuracy. Especially for portraits. This is a very uh, loose way of doing it. So if you're uh, if you're going to art school or something, and you've come across my video, and you start using this technique, don't blame me if it goes wrong. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, I'm going to end up drawing this whole thing. You can see how you can just look at both sides and then start playing with it a little bit to get it right. Anyway, there's that. Like I said, I don't want to uh, do too much. This, this is all about being light and happy and <laughs> not no stress I'm gonna get a little bit of blue in with my black and a little bit of white a bit more of that sea blue cool down this gray and we'll paint this whole thing I think and then I'll paint on top of it afterwards If your paint is a little bit on the dry side, just get a little bit of water. And you can happily this truck sort of goes like that. It's further in though. I haven't given myself much space here, it's actually further in. It goes right like that and then round. I think it finishes about there actually, this picture. Yeah, I didn't really look at this picture behind, but I think I missed a bargain there. <laughs> a bargain picture. Could have probably got that as well. Can't resist a bargain from the second hand shop. Anyway, there we go. I think that's about right. I want a bit of the uh, burnt sienna. Might get a bit of phthalo green in it, a bit of red, crimson, make a bit of a brown. Nice 
nice dark brown to the red side. Sort of a mahogany looking frame. Let's put that on. I'm painting quite loose. I'm using my uh, brush that you can't really paint very accurately with. <laughs> I do that on purpose because uh, if you get if you pick up the brush that you can paint accurately with, for me anyway, I'm not going to be able to do the uh, the errors. I'm not going to be able to paint all my errors, and uh, it's about there. That's a that picture. This is about there. I'll paint the rest of that just so I can see where it goes. Yeah, because I want it to look like it's loosely painted as well as to be loosely painted. And I'm not going to be able to have it looking very loose if I'm using really strict strokes and brushes. I am going to struggle making these next lines, but I'll give it a go. I need a bit of white, a bit of white, a little bit of black, and a little bit of yellow, and a bit of white, and to make a uh, kind of a metal colour. I used to find uh, ivory black and yellow ochre. And white, you can make quite good metal colours because the ivory black would go a little bit green with the yellow ochre. This black isn't though, <laughs> so I'm putting a little bit of green in, more white. That metal's not bad, it's not a bad metal colour. Let's put it on. See how it looks. You know that you get these metal trims on the I don't know what they're called really on the frames. I'll call it a metal trim. I'll loosely put that in as well. You can uh, spin your uh, brush, I mean your canvas around or paper around to make it easier for yourself. That's looking pretty good though, isn't it? Looking very picture framey. <laughs> Looking picture framey. Hmm. I think that's a word. <laughs> so while that's drying, I'm going to start putting this jug in since we pretty much painted it already. So I want some yellow and some red. Bit more red. Bit of burnt sienna in it. Bit of white. A little more red. More white. I've gone a bit too white now. Whoops. Let's make another one there. Sort of looks like that. Maybe it's got a bit of blue in it. Yeah, had a little bit of red and blue. I'll put that in. That one looks a bit better, a bit nicer, a bit closer anyway. So, start putting this paint down here.
stroke shape. A more blue in it. I think I need a tiny bit of black in the red. Mm, that's quite nice, a really dark one. Just for this edge, it's a lot darker. Sort of a shape there. Try and keep these brush strokes loose and fun. Get some colour going, light colour here. It might look a, a little bit more red than it is on the camera. <laughs> I just glanced up and saw just a touch more red than it is but it's not not bad. It's hard to get the, uh, the camera to see exactly what you're seeing but it is close. quite like painting pottery it's quite good fun quite a lot of my uh, favorite artists like painting pottery I remember uh, staring at some of Van Gogh's paintings in in a book that I had before uh, we could look at internet pictures <laughs> or before I was looking at them all the time I was looking at them in books <laughs> going to the library and getting books on artists or going I, majority of them I was buying them from second hand shops and getting books and trying to learn from seeing what other great painters have done Using a bit of blue to dull my colour there. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not bad. Get this line a little bit better here. See this bit's quite important, this bit and the top bit, quite important to try and get it looking right. The top is quite light, the, uh, there's quite a light bit there. can see flashes of light that's all the reflective light I'll come back and I'll use some uh, white to pick up the main reflections but that pot is looking quite good I'll just wash my brush get a bit more color Not 
the biggest problem is this area it's not really showing it very well nah, that's probably a bit better anyway I'll do for that there's a uh, person in the picture frame so we need to paint them in uh, let's go let's do it to about there well the head's about there and then there's some sort of a frilly thing there and there <laughs> I'm laughing because of how loose I've painted that. And there's a uh, bit of a whoop, there's a thing there, fluffy bit, fluffy arms. There's a few flowers in this as well. Just put them in like that. So yeah, remember I'm very loosely doing this. I don't want it to be too I don't want this to be too detailed really. I think it's good to practice painting loosely because then when you come to paint something a bit more serious <laughs> a bit more serious you put your serious hat on when you're painting then uh, your loose painting helps you because you can go into that mindset of not worrying and having fun there's the hair the hair's quite big goes down Wee. bit of a light a light brown on the top of the head there Around that bit there. To be honest, I think a little bit of brown, burnt sienna, and white. It's probably the skin tone, so I'll put that there and I'll just lighten that one side a bit of the face. I'm not gonna wear. Uh, do the face detail. I'm just going to pick out little highlights and a bit of yellow ochre and an orange, and there's a bit of a thing there. There is some text there, but I don't really want it in because it's a bit of advertising. This actually is a bit of advertising, and uh, I'll put some green there because there's some green at the bottom. Just mixed a little bit of blue and yellow together, just blend that upwards. Don't know whether I should write something there. Maybe I should. I'll just change the letter into something else.
maybe I should write this is what you should do when you watch this video click on the like button <laughs> Don't forget to uh, like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> if you know anyone, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> hmm, this, I tell you what, this light that I've just created, it's going to be nice on this. I'm just going to put a bit on. A bit of light there. Hmm, that's quite nice. So yeah, don't forget to like. Give it a thumbs up. That's supposed to be a thumbs up. <laughs> no, that'll do. So the next bit, I've got a bit of a battle now because that L's a little bit too strong. So I'll put a little bit of grey in it just to send it backwards. Yeah, that's a bit better. But anyway. We don't want to worry too much about that. We want to start putting in the other jug. Well, the jug, the only jug. The other one's a vase. <laughs> so I need to put in that jug. There's a bit of a shadow there as well. I might put that in. Sort of a... What I tend to do, something I always think of, is it cold or warm? The shadow looks a bit cold to me, so straight away just put some blue in. If the shadow feels cold, blue, if it feels warm, maybe you need a bit of red in there. It's actually really simple, isn't it? I say that. I didn't used to think that, but it is. <laughs> I didn't used to think it because I didn't really think about the colour temperature of a shadow. I mean, who thinks about that? I didn't. I do now. <laughs> it's all I ever look at when I'm looking at like stuff to paint. Light looks good, or oh, I like the way that that colour looks so cool and makes everything look really interesting because of that coolness of the. <laughs> the colour or the I see something that looks really warm and I'm thinking oh that looks really I like the way the roof tiles are bouncing on the side of that wall and making it look warm and looking at things like that all the time anyway bit of burnt sienna bit of burnt sienna and a bit of white something like that Maybe. Maybe a touch of green in it. Ooh, that's nice. That's the pot colour. That is nice. Right. See if we can do this pot justice. It's a rounded shape. Get that rounded sort of shape. And as they spout, I kind of messed up with that area. Let's just bit of, put a bit of paint on there. There we go. Nobody will ever know. And then there's the jug shape down like that. 
like this. Let's leave it further up like this. Ooh. Yes. That goes over that. I just painted it in really so I knew where everything was. Out there and then it comes in to about about there like this like that. I'm gonna do this all the same colour and then I'm gonna start adding more colour into it. Because it's it's drying all the time, I've got to remember that it's drying all the time, so I'm fine. So this bit I goes and the things that used to scare me about acrylics when I first started using them a bit more, the things that I benefit from now. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? You get used to a material and then you start understanding it a bit more. You can use it, your newfound understanding to your benefit. Think about when you first picked up your paints to now, if you've painted a few paintings, even after one or two paintings, you suddenly you're a lot better you've got a bit more knowledge and then you can go again for the next painting and suddenly your paintings are improving and improving you're getting better and better and then people are looking at your pictures thinking hmm maybe I'll have a go at that <laughs> And they'll uh, buy a load of paints and they'll try painting and they'll find it really hard and then they'll give you all the paints so encourage people to start because when they give up you can get all the free paints <laughs> <coughs> right now I've got my jug shape although the shape's a bit off isn't it here that doesn't look right bit more there yeah okay some green and blue some white I don't even want a bit of that green actually there's a really nice glaze to this uh, little pot. It's a really, really nice light glaze. Sort of a bluey green. Something like that, actually. Nice bluey green. And it's got the colour that goes under there. bit inside just smudge that there's some there's a lovely bit that goes Yeah, I wish I bought this pot, but you know, I would only use it to do this painting for, so that's why I'm uh, doing <laughs> doing it the way I'm doing it, because I, I really like it, all, everything, so I don't want to be uh, hoarding too much stuff, do I? <laughs> but I always look at the pots and things, and I'm like, oh, that's nice, that would make a great painting. I need a 
a bit more burnt sienna in with that color that greeny color just making a greeny gray type color and I can start putting that in sort of goes like this there's a dark there that needs to go up a bit better a little bit of dark brownie colour just throwing in a bit of black in my colour. That needs to be more like that. color in here sort of an orangey kind of color amongst that a dark it's a nice dark bit there under that bit there and there It's not quite as green as that, so I need to sort of dull this a little bit. I haven't quite got that shape right. goes up a little bit too much really I think I don't know I know what it is it's this bit it should be about there and then that should be going around like that
down there eventually. <laughs> so it's sort of it's nice and rounded there. And then it goes around like that, and then there's the uh, jug bit there. A bit of burnt sienna. There. Leave enough information to show that it's there. to be sort of up there really about there and we've got that coming around green areas and there's pink areas goes around like that there's a bit of warmth in the colour down here and there's a bit of warmth on the on the handle there Start looking for these warm bits now. These lights. Some light that goes kind of down there. using quite a thicker paint when I do my lights just to make sure that they 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 go on and they don't lose their brightness that starting to look uh, pretty good 
So I'm going to start adding some of these white, really white lights. What I'm going to use is a going to use sort of a white with a, a sort of a dirty white there's a bit of yellow in there there's a bit of red in there I don't want it to be white white <laughs> and there's, a, there's a bit of light going down that side there there's a bit that hits it there there's some bits of spark on that Definite sparkles on these bits and on this bit there. I can see a little bit there as well. And on this, some of that sort of disappeared a little bit, but you can see sparkle there there's a sparkle just there in front of the jug part and then one there and on this back side of the, the jug there and up the little bit there as well And we've got a bit of shadow behind this this one jug. So what we need to do. These water spots are not supposed to be there. <laughs> so we're gonna get some of the blue and the blue and the black again. And get some of this shadow that's in here, so it goes whoop. Bit of dark underneath as well, where the light wouldn't get just underneath the, the actual pot. Can help set pot down onto the ground a little bit doing that. I've lost a bit of the colour that's here, so I'll just warm that up a bit. More colour there. It's a bit more colour in here as well. That dark uh, looks a bit too much to me so I'm going to cool it down a little bit this bit there seems to be a bit higher there Burnt sienna and white. I 
Yeah, that's loads better. The only thing that I can see now is the top of this part needs a bit more light. Something like that, and there's a little bit of a dot of light there. A touch of light there as well. And then you can actually see there's something else here, so you can see a bit of a shadow. I don't know what it is. There's a shadow there. Put it in for fun. And then the other bit is. Now I can use my liner. I can, I've done everything that I can with a bigger brush, and then you can use your liner brush, and you can put in the detail. There's a bit of a dark running around that part of the frame. And it's casting a bit of a shadow. Just gives it a little bit more interest. Mm. I can almost see like a line there where that job goes. Clean that up a bit, I suppose. Well, yeah, it just shows how you can create something quite loosely, and then if you wanted to, you could come back and go for a bit more detail afterwards. I think I need to paint in a little, a little bit more of that. Behind there. cleans it up a bit doesn't it? Looked a little bit messy. I think I'm gonna uh, call that one finished. I can't see anything that I would want to add. Well I can <laughs> actually. There's a bit of string that sort of goes here. Don't know why. And you can sort of see the frame marks there. I mean, that's a bit too much detail, really, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, like I said, you can paint somewhat loosely, and then afterwards you can go in and put in the detail if you want to. If you want to take it to another level of detail, but at least you once you've messed around and sploshed in the paint you've got something there 
and then afterwards you can take it further but I think that is about as far as I want to take this one I don't really want to take this one any further Just wanted to soften that dark because I didn't really like it there. You do get some dark under there, but not quite as dark as that. It's more of a blue. Anyway, <laughs> we really need to uh, consider the end is near for this painting. I call it. Call that one. We'll call that one almost finished. Because <laughs> I just want to get a little bit of a line that goes around here and then. Like that. Just to plonk that down. Plonk it down onto the ground. But you could put some plants in the vase. You could do anything you like. You could do what you how you want to make it look. Anyway, I think we are finished. That's not a bad go for a nice fun painting. I enjoyed it actually. I did enjoy it. It adds a little bit more having a picture behind, doesn't it? It makes it a bit harder. And then uh, it's good to mass it in and check it out afterwards and see what you think. And I think we've done a pretty good job. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this acrylic painting and gave you a bit of an idea of what you could do. You could, you could always, like I said, you can take it a lot further if you wanted to. The one thing I might have done is I could have brightened everything around it and then that would uh, make the darks look a bit darker because like this uh, background here you could go and then that see how that brings the picture out a little bit more and then you can uh, clean things up a little better something like that just shows how I could paint forever doesn't that really but anyway <laughs> thanks very much for watching this one and I will see you at another one. Cheers. Bye.